Here is the formula for integration by parts. Some people have trouble memorizing this formula and also some trouble using it. I'm going to show you how this formula gives rise to a scheme which is a little bit easier to picture for some people. I'm going to start by looking at a very simple case of integration by parts, the integral of x times e to the power 3x. To use the formula we need to identify the components of that integral, the x and the e to the 3x, as one or other of u and v primed. If there is a polynomial or a power of x in the integral, then it is usually, not always, but usually the best choice to identify that power of x to be the u and the other function to be the v primed. We'll do that here. So I'm going to choose u to be the x and v primed to be e to the 3x. Now look at the right hand side of the formula. Certainly there is a u there, but there's no v primed, and there is a v and there is a u primed. We'd better work out what those two other quantities are. We need to differentiate u to get u primed, and integrate v primed to get v. That's easy enough, I'll do it now. Incidentally, I'm going to use the right hand side of the space in a minute for something else, so I'm going to draw a line down the middle to stop myself straying over it. There are the two required quantities. Differentiating x gives 1, and integrating e to the 3x gives a third e to the 3x. I'm now able to write out the formula for integration by parts of x e to the 3x using the right hand side, and identifying the correct quantities in the right hand side. I'll colour code this so you can see where each one has come from. So there is the uv, and then we need to subtract the new integral of u primed v. At this stage, if we've done the integration correctly and followed the formula and made sensible choices for u and v, the new integral should be easier than the old one. I think you can see that that is the case here. Most people would now rush ahead, perform the second integral and be finished with the problem. Instead, I'm going to pull back and study a little closer what has actually happened here. On the right hand side I'm going to make a table I'm going to start with the functions u and v primed in two separate columns. There they are. I'm going to link them with a horizontal red line. By a horizontal red line, I mean to indicate that I'm planning to integrate the product of those two things. Now, what happened in the integration by parts formula? We ended up having to differentiate u and integrate the v prime to get v. Let's do that for the next row in the table. That gives what I show here, a 1 and a third e to the 3x. Now look back in the left hand side of this work. Look at the bottom where I've actually done the integration. The first term was x times a third e to the 3x. That's actually the product of the two things on my table diagonally from top left to bottom right. I'm going to connect those with a sloping blue line that means take the product. I'm not going to write that on because the picture will start to get a bit too cluttered, so I'll just ask you to remember it. The sloping blue line means I take the product of x times 1 30 to the 3x. What else is over there on the left hand side? It's minus the integral of 1 times a 30 to the 3x. I could indicate that by putting in another red horizontal line and reminding myself that there's also a minus to include. So now, using my little table, I could write down the work on the left-hand side, never having had to refer to the integration by parts formula. It's simply the product of the things connected by the blue line minus the integral of the two things multiplied together connected by the red line. I don't really want to write that out again in the space that's still here, because I want to use that space further. But let's just talk our way through it again. The integral of x e to the 3x, that's the two things connected by the top red line, and represented here with the yellow circle on the left, is now equal to, and we take the product of the two things connected by the diagonal blue line, that's the first term on the right, and then because there's another horizontal red line below, and a minus sign, we take minus the integral and the new product inside. 
But now we've found ourselves a sort of algorithm. Integrate the stuff with the horizontal red line. Gives. Product of the things with the diagonal blue. Minus a new integral with a new lower horizontal red line. Why don't we just try this again to do the next integral, the one that we haven't finished yet? What we have to do is fill in a third row to our table. Still differentiate on the left, integrate on the right, and remember to include a new minus sign. Differentiating 1 gives 0. Integrating a third e to the 3x will give a ninth e to the 3x. Then connect up with the red and the blue lines. A blue one diagonally and a red one horizontally with an extra minus, so the old minus now turns back to a plus. At this stage we can now use our table to write out the full result of the integration by parts. We start at the top, the integral x e to the 3x. Go down the first blue diagonal line and make a product, then minus a new integral. But that integral can be done again using the table. If we go down the next blue diagonal line, that will mean minus 1 times a ninth e to the 3x. And now, the, the last step, we would expect a new integral. But notice that in that integral, there will be a 0. 0 times a ninth e to the 3x is 0 again. That means there's nothing to integrate, and so we've finished, apart from adding on our constant. That 0 was pretty important. It was a result of starting with a polynomial for our u, namely x. The presence of the 0 means that the integration terminates and we get a finished expression. Let me now show you how we can use this scheme to do a more complicated integration by parts. We'll do the integral of x cubed e to the 2x dx. Since that's quite a high power of x, it would normally be very tedious. I think the new method is probably a little bit quicker and easier. The first thing to say is that I don't have to bother now with working on the left. I don't need to use the integration by parts formula. All I need to do is to make my little table, where I differentiate on the left and integrate on the right as I go down the columns. Let's do that. So there's my product to be integrated with, as usual, the red horizontal line connecting. Let's just differentiate down the left-hand column until we get to zero. Easy enough, eh? And then down the right-hand column, keep integrating the exponential. We'll get an extra factor of a half each time we do that. There are the entries. All I need to do now is to put in my sloping blue lines. I don't even need to put in more red ones because the zero at the bottom means that the integrations are just going to fizzle out and finish by the end. I do, however, need to remember the alternating signs. With this table, I can read off the answer. Just take products along the diagonal blue lines. The first one is x cubed times a half e to the 2x. The next one down will be minus 3x squared times a quarter e to the 2x. Then plus 6x times an eighth e to the 2x, and so on. And there it all is. Don't forget the plus c at the end. All that remains is to tidy things up. I guess that means recognising that there's a factor of e to the 2x for a start, and then simplifying all the numerical coefficients. And there's the answer. I'm almost ready to stop. I just want to set you one to try yourself. It works with sines and cosines as well. So I'll set you a problem and then just write the answer out underneath. I'll leave you to check it using this method. You can have a go at this one. So the x cubed minus x squared heads the column on the left and the cos x heads the column on the right. Then you just differentiate down the left hand column and integrate down the right hand column. You do have to be very careful with all the negative signs that accumulate. Oh and incidentally of course you don't need all the colour coding that I've used. I've just used that here to try and make things clearer.